Okay, so practice listening. If someone says this to you, what are they feeling and how can we respond? So we can practice this. Okay, if someone says, I feel left out, now what, what feeling would they have? Okay, I'm going to give you the answer, but first you think. First you think, a person feel left out. That means the person finds that other people don't pay attention to him, don't respond to his needs, so he feels lonely. He feels left out, he feels despised. The other people despise him. They don't regard him as important. So he feels left out. He feels lonely and helpless. He would have low self-image that nobody pay attention to him. So if a person says, I feel left out, then we understand. We try to think and then we can find out from him. So do you feel lonely? Do you feel despised? That other people are despising you? That you feel that you are not, uh, you think that you are not important? That you, uh, do you feel, you know, uh, that other people are, you think that you find that people are hurting you, are, uh, are not paying attention to you, okay? Okay, the second one here, people don't care about me. Uh, if someone says that, oh, people don't care about me, that means, you know, they, they say that the people uh, don't pay attention to him and don't care about him, don't help him, don't love him. And uh, so what kind of feeling would he have? He would have, he would feel uh, unimportant. He would feel left out. He would feel unhappy. He would feel hurt. He would feel despised. So these are his feelings. And then three, I always fail. I can never do anything right. So this person, uh, has a lot of failure, then his feeling would be a sense of, uh, you know, um, a sense of failure, a sense of uh, useless. He think that, now thinking is a discernment. He thinks that he's useful, useless. Then he would feel, he would feel unimportant. That uh, he would think that he's unimportant and he will feel, um, uh, a feeling of um, not being respected by people. Uh, he doesn't like himself. Uh, he would have low self-image. So that's the feeling of a person who always, he says he always fail. Now you may say, well, okay, so if we can say that, yes, I, I know that you feel that uh, you don't feel good about yourself. You, you, are, you find that you have a low self-image. Now when we say that, how does that help the person? Now when we say that we don't, we're not criticizing the person, we're just naming uh, the, the situation of person, but we can ask him, so do you feel that you, are, you think that you're use, useless, that you feel you feel uh, you have a low self-image about yourself. So we can ask him, is that true? And then when he says that it's true, then we accept the person. We accept the person and then and, and we find out why he thinks that way. And then uh, when we find out, then we can work on it. So do you want to have a, a healthier self-image? Do you want to feel better about yourself? Do you want to build up your sense of uh, that you have a person who has accomplishments? How can you build that up? So we, we guide them to see that, you know, what do you think uh, uh, that God would regard you? Would God sees that you are important? Are you important in the sight of God? And, and then do you want to build up your abilities to relate to God, to relate to people, to work on things so that you don't find yourself as a failure anymore, that you find that you are improving, you are succeeding, succeeding in what you do, you're improving. So,
Do you want to work on things one by one? So we accept where they are. Uh, now, for instance, if our, our child says to us, well, no matter how well we do, I find that uh, you don't uh, appreciate that. When, even when I, you know, I work hard on my schoolwork and you still uh, think that I'm not doing well, and I feel uh, that you know, I feel despised, I feel that uh, you're not, uh, uh, you don't appreciate me, you don't like me. So the person might, you know, say this, might, you know, um, uh, you know, say that how he's, why he's feeling that way. And then if we can respond to the person and say, I'm sorry I make you feel that way. I want to change. I want to help you to realize that you're important. Now, for, this, uh, for a person to feel, to have a stronger sense of importance, to have a higher self-image, he needs two things. He needs to have, first, to believe that uh, he's loved by God. He's important. He has intrinsic importance. The second is, he needs to build up on his abilities. He needs to build his ability to relate to people, to relate to God, to have strength from God, to uh, handle problems, to resolve problems, uh, to manage his emotions. So his abilities are important. If a person believes that God loves him, but he fails in everything, he will not have good self-image. In order for a person to have good self-image, he needs to believe that God really loves him and cares about him. And then at the same time, he builds up his ability to relate to people, to relate to God, to manage his problems, to overcome problems, to, to work on things. So we can guide people to, to improve. But first we need to accept, to see, oh, I heard that you feel that you are not important. You think that you are not important. You, you, you think that you cannot accomplish anything, so you feel very inferior. You feel inferior about yourself. So we can name that, and then we can say that uh, I can understand why you feel that way, and I, I want to help you to realize that you're important, and you can work on your life, and you will improve and improve, and I appreciate the change, and God appreciates the change. Do you want to change? So when we can name the feelings, name the problem, it doesn't mean we despise the person. We, then we can help the person, guide the person to change step by step to overcome his problem. And then whenever he improves a little bit, we can appreciate them. It's like what Jesus said, if you give a cup of cold water to a little one, you by no means lose your reward. So Jesus says, even when you do the smallest, smallest thing, to a most unimportant person, to a little one, you by no means lose your reward. So even when you do a little thing to a, an important person, you still will be rewarded by God and God appreciates that and God likes that. So for God, any improvement we have, God is very happy. So I hope that you understand this. Whenever we do anything for God with the right attitude, God is very happy. So we can be happy because God is happy with us. And we can counsel people and help people to see that when they do anything right, even if they have still a lot to improve, but they already are working on a problem, we can say, you are improving. You're getting better. You can be happy about yourself. And I'm happy that you're improving. I'm happy you're improving. That way the first person feels very you know, encouraged. That is encouragement with grace. Remember, when I talk about mess, uh, sermons, I always talk about motivate people with grace, with God's grace. Because when, when we do a little thing for God, even a cup of cold water to a little one, God is very happy. So that motivates us to do more things to other people. And so that is the motivation with the grace of God. And we can motivate ourselves and say, I'm helping people. I'm sincerely helping them. 
I'm listening to them and I care about them. I have compassion on them. Then we can feel happy because God will be happy with us. And then at the same time, when people do, uh, you know, they start to improve. They they start to trust in God more. They tr start to work on the relationship with people. Then we say, "You are improving. You are improving. You are getting better. God is happy with you, and I'm happy with you." Then people will feel encouraged. Now, if in our message is always encouraging people, so for your assignments in the future, I hope you record your messages to me. Record, uh, but please speak clear English, and speak slowly. Uh, try to speak, enunciate, speak clearly so I can understand you. Then I can hear the tone of your message. Does your message convey grace? Or does your message convey pressure and commandment and criticism? Now, we do tell people what they should do, but this is the way we can tell them. When you trust in God, God is very happy with you. When you obey God, God is very happy with you. When you follow God in any way, He's very happy with you. When you, when you repent, God is very happy with you. So that is the way how we can encourage people to improve, by telling them, God will be happy with you when you do that. Instead of saying, you have to, you have to. Instead of saying, you have to pray more. Now, it's true that they should pray more. But if we say, when you pray God, to God more, you love God all the time, God is very happy with you. And when He's happy with you, He'll pour His blessings upon you. So you can be very, very happy. So this is motivation by the grace of God. So I hope that you can see that this start with listening. The listening part already shows that we really care about the person. Okay, and then a person says, I have no real friends. Nobody likes me. So when the person says that, well, he is very lonely. He feels very lonely. So we, the feeling, what are the feelings? He feels very lonely. He feels left out. He feels unimportant that uh, he, uh, he would have low self-image. He would not like himself. And he thinks that people don't like him. So a person like that is, is miserable. It's, his life is painful. So we can say to them, yes, I know that it's not easy and you'll, be, you'll feel very unhappy. Do you want to have real friends? And what do you think are hindering? What are the reasons that hinder you from having good friends, real friends? So we find out from him why, what are the reasons? And then can those reasons be overcome? Can the problems be overcome? Okay, and the person says, number five, I want to give up. That means this person has a strong sense of failure, that he feels inferior, he thinks that he's not capable, he cannot do things well, and also he feels hurt. Maybe other people criticize him. Other people and himself, he himself would criticize himself also. That he criticize himself and say, you are useless, you cannot do anything right. Then he would say, oh, I want to give up, I, I cannot do anything well. I, I always fail. So we, we accept that. When, now sometimes the person might not say that. Uh, they might not say, I want to give up. They, they just say, well, I can never please my wife. I can never uh, have good friends. I can never do things well. And, I, and my uh, wife criticizes me. Other people dislike me. So. When they say things like that, we try to think deeply and feel the feeling of the person. So if he says that, well, my wife uh, doesn't like me, my wife doesn't treat me well, so we respond to that feeling. Oh, you must feel hurt. You feel lonely. Now, now it could be partly his fault also. When we say, I can hear your feeling, it doesn't mean we, we're not, it doesn't mean that we say that you have no faults. But we still accept the feeling. 
we we need to understand even when the person has done something wrong for instance some someone has committed a serious sin he has committed a serious sin and he feels very guilty um, when he says he feels very guilty we don't have to dump more guilt on him and we can say I know that you feel guilty I know that you feel bad about your sins and uh, it, it is good that you feel guilty so that's the beginning of repentance so we appreciate that instead of giving the person more pressure and we accept the person that he's feeling guilty now and he find it hard to overcome the sin so we try to understand the person's feeling and name it to them say it to them or find out from them if that is true um, for instance a person feel continue to feel guilty uh, do you believe that God forgives you uh, why do you think God is not forgiving you the person might say well because I've sinned again and again so I think that God is not forgiving me uh, and then we can ask him instead of telling them the biblical truth we can ask him um, what does the Bible say about that when you repent of your sins you know when a person is contrite in his heart how does God see that so what do you think uh, is that uh, what you said is it is it right is God really angry with you and and not forgiving you do you think uh, that is true the person may say well I can believe the Bible says that but I just don't feel forgiven then then we hear this okay this person's uh, he believes that God can forgive him but he himself cannot forgive himself he feel very bad so we can ask him why do you feel so bad why do you feel guilty because he's he might say well because I've sinned again and again so it's because of your failure to overcome your sin therefore you think that God doesn't forgive you now think of it this way so we we we, we guide him um, so you're in a difficult situation you're struggling with sin and uh, if you tell God God I'm struggling with my sin I need your help I want to overcome the sin but I find that I fail again and again please help me what do you think God thinks about that so if a uh, for instance the tax collector went to the temple and he dare not look up he you know his head is bowed and he beat his chest and say you know Lord have mercy upon me a poor sinner now you see already has he ov already overcome his sins not yet right not yet because he's still a sinner but Jesus said he will go home forgiven he's go home righteous because God sees that he's contrite he's sorry for his sin then God is very happy with him and God will forgive him so we can name the feeling and then guide the person step by step to overcome his feelings when we can counsel people like that then they will um, they will feel comforted and they will have motivation to change okay so we want to listen to people when they say anything if your spouse says anything then we want to uh, you know listen and f find out the feelings behind that for instance the wife says oh um, it's so hard to to guide the children so hard to take care of the children so hard to for them to obey then we hear that the wife says that it's difficult so she feel you know maybe she feel tired she feel frustrated she feel helpless so we can ask her do you feel helpless and uh, so when we can name that and then the wife would say well I'm I'm happy that you can sense my helplessness that you know that I'm I feel helpless I'm very happy that you 
you know that I'm I, I'm feeling helpless. So we can name that, and then the wife will feel comforted that we are facing the problem together with her. So that's the importance of of listening. Okay, and then the person says, "I miss my parents or miss someone." So then there's a feeling of uh, there's an action of remembering the person and feel feel uh, lonely or feel. Uh, feel bad because he cannot see his parents now and so we we can say well I can see that you are missing you you miss your parents and you you really wish they were here and they're not here so you feel sad um, so we can name that feeling that will help the person to feel accepted and then number seven I dare not speak in front of people so that's we can say also you feel do you feel shy or you feel uh, lack of confidence in confident uh, that you feel you know you have no confidence to speak uh, that people won't listen to you so you feel inferior therefore you dare not dare not uh, speak in front of people so we so we name that feeling and we try to find out the feeling and then and then we can um, guide them to change to say well do you want to learn to to have more confidence now first we can say to a person well when you when you speak I can hear you well I can understand your feelings you are expressing yourself I can understand you so at least with me you have you can feel free to speak to me I I can I you know use expressing yourself well so that way that will give the person's confidence and then ask him why he thinks that people are not listening to him and why he dare not speak uh, did, is it because your parents or your or some of your family members they don't listen to you and they despise what you said therefore you dare not speak in front of people so we we explore that and we, we and then we guide them to find ways how to have more confidence how he can practice speaking with people he trusts. So when he can speak with people he trusts and he can speak with more people. And then the person says, I have sinned too much. So he feels guilty. Well, we can say, well, it's good that you know that you sinned too much. So do you want to change? Do you want to improve? And then the person says, I want to. Then we can say, well, the fact that you want to change, you want to overcome your sins, is already means that you are, uh, you have the motivation to change. And what do you think God will feel about you now, when you want to change, when you want to repent? God is happy with you. God wants to, you know, God is happy with you, and God wants to bless you. God wants to forgive you. So we ask the person. You know what do you think what do you think God is thinking about you and ha have them read Bible passages and and uh, do you think God is uh, willing to forgive you now and if you don't if you don't think that God is willing to forgive you now so why do you think God is not willing to forgive you now so we can guide him to understand now sometimes we think well it's he should know that when we confess our sins, God will forgive us our sins. But for some people, they have hindrances. So we can find out why he has that hindrance. And the person says, number nine, I have no hope in life. That, that the person says, you know, I have no hope. I, I feel hopeless. Then we can say, well, I'm, I feel very sorry that you feel that way. That you must have, uh, you must feel very hurt because you have no hope. You feel lonely, right? You feel there is no future. You think there is no future. You think people have despised you and have left you, left you alone and, and uh, give up, has given up on you. So we can find out what, why they think that way, and they can, we can name the feelings. We listen to them and name the feelings. Okay, and so 
when we practice listening to people, actually all day long, people will be speaking around you. Some, sometimes they say something and then try to think about the feelings and then respond to them. Of course, we don't need to respond to every feeling. We've, we select what feelings we need to respond to. But when we hear someone says something in a sad tone, in an angry tone, now sometimes we dare not respond to people who has anger. But actually, we can guide them to understand the anger. Instead of telling them, don't be angry, we can say, well, I heard that you have some anger. Uh, can you tell me what causes you to be angry? So we can guide him and listen to him. And actually listen to, listening to someone who has anger would calm him down already because he finds someone willing to listen to him and he will feel comforted. Okay, so, uh, so I hope you practice that with your spouse, with your family members, now, uh, usually children are willing to talk, you know, to tell things uh, when they are younger. So if our children talk to us when they are little kids, they, they talk all the time and we respond to them all the time. Then the kids will have confidence in us. Then they will be willing to talk to us. And while they still talk to us, we want to listen to them so that we can open the way of communication with them. The more we listen to them, the more we build relationship. So I hope that we all understand that as ministers, as ministers, that we can listen to people is very critical to our life, to our happiness, to our ministry, to our family, to everything in our life. Um, you know, for many people, they think that skill is most important uh, in the career. You know, in, they think that skill is most important. But actually, in most jobs, it's more important to be able to listen to people and relate to people. And especially in ministry, it's very important that we can listen to people and respond to people and understand the feelings and respond to the feelings. I have met many pastors who don't listen to the members. They just act like a king. They just command people to change. Instead, we should listen to people and guide them to see the goodness of God and have the motivation to change and tell them, when you love God, God is very happy with you and I'm happy with you too. And I appreciate that. I appreciate what you do. That way, people will, will, will say, wow, you care about me, you listen to me, then it will improve our ministry and our family and everything in our life. Okay, now next we guide a counselee to express because uh, after we, you know, in the process of listening, sometimes they might not say the whole thing. Then we need to ask them questions to guide them. Use questions to guide how do you feel do you feel despised? Do you feel unfair, angry, guilty? So we, we guide them. When we heard that, okay, this person says, uh, I, I failed my exam already. So that's an action. He failed. So he didn't say his feelings. And then we can ask him, so how do you feel now? Do you feel uh, disappointed? Uh, now the person might feel angry at himself because he fails. There, there are all kinds of feelings, you know. Uh, when a person fails in his exam, he might feel, you know, uh, disappointed. He might feel angry. He might feel f uh, angry at himself that he did not study well. And or he might feel frustrated. I've worked so hard and I never can get a good grade. Or they might feel angry with the parents, give them them, giving them so much pressure. Or he might be jealous of other people who have better grade. So there are all kinds of possible feelings. So we want to use questions to ask him. So that depends on whether we can listen to people to, f to feel their feelings. 
Okay, and then repeat what he has said to confirm and to invite him to say more. So we, um, when he says something, well, I feel frustrated. Then we say, oh, I heard that you feel frustrated. We say that. Now, even though this is very simple, I feel frustrated, and then we say, oh, I heard that you say you are frustrated. Then the person would say, well, you listen to me. You, you heard that I'm frustrated. You care about me. So that is one simple way to respond to people. And then, and then the person would naturally want to talk more about his frustration. When we can respond to his frustration, then he would, then he would uh, want to say more about it. So uh, repeating what he said uh, in our own words would help people to express more. And then three, it, reflecting, using a different way to express what the counselee has just said. You feel angry because he said, he said that to you, right? What your husband said made you feel angry, right? You feel sad because he has left you, right? You feel guilty because you have not helped you. Uh, you have not helped him much, right? So we, we can reflect, you know, what he said. Uh, for instance, uh, he just said, well, I feel, he talks about his husband and then his, uh, his wife and then he's very angry. Then we put it all together and paraphrase it and say, well, um, I heard that you said that because of what your, what your wife said, therefore you feel angry, you feel frustrated. So we can name that, to name that, uh, uh, to, to, um, to rephrase what he said, to uh, put together what he said. Okay, and then respond to and accept his feeling instead of analyzing it. So res respond to and accept instead of analyzing. Now it's very natural for you to feel sad now so that's accepting it's natural for you to feel sad now I know that you miss your mother so you we say that the feeling I feel sad for you I'm sorry that happened to you you have been hurt deeply I know that you feel angry now those are reflecting uh, uh, responding to the feelings now analyzing the feeling is like this oh you feel angry because your husband said that to you uh, because you you don't like what he said because you don't accept your husband uh, that's why you feel angry that's analyzing what he said uh, or inside of us we analyze what he uh, what he said so instead of doing that we just reflect try to pinpoint what feelings he has or ask him what feelings he has when he talked like that now sometimes you can see the feelings on the face, you know, when they're angry, they're full of anger. And then we can say, I see that you are angry now. I know that it's not easy for you now. So acknowledge that it's not easy for them. It doesn't mean we agree with them that you should be angry. But we, we you know, we can say, I can see that you are angry. I know that it's not easy. So just to agree with the person that it's not easy. It doesn't mean it's right for him to be angry. We don't have to say that. Okay, so accept the feeling, respond to the feelings. And then empathy and support. 